What's up guys, how's everyone doing today? Today, we have got a truly bizarre case to talk about. This is one of the strangest, weirdest cases I've ever done in my life. When I was researching this case and putting this video together, I honestly couldn't believe half of the stuff I was reading and I thought, is this even true? But it sure is guys. This is the case of the 15 year old boy who made a crazy plot to get himself murdered. Let's get into the video guys. This is John. Obviously, I can't show many pictures of him because there isn't any out there because of his age. This kid impersonated a British Secret Service agent in order to plot his own death in a deadly murder. Now guys, I'll let you just think about that for a second. This kid literally plotted a very sophisticated murder. He made up characters. He killed characters off. This is crazy, guys. Let's get into it now. Also guys, before we get into the video, please like, comment, share and subscribe as I am a new YouTuber and it truly helps me out a lot and gives me the motivation I need to carry on making videos. Let's get it guys. You might have seen a film on Netflix called You Want Me To Kill Him. This is the film what is based on this story. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend that you do watch it as it is actually quite a good film to say it's quite old and everything in the film is quite low budget but the story is actually quite good. Anyway, enough of the film. Let's get into the actual real life story. So if you haven't watched this film, it's basically based on a bizarre story on a young schoolboy, John, who acted as a female British Secret Service agent in a chat room in order to get another boy called Mark to kill John. Yes, that's right guys. I know what you're thinking by now. Why on earth would you pretend to be a secret agent and plot your own murder? This just doesn't make any sense. Of course this is some sort of suicidal plan. But why did he have to go for all this extra work and put his friend Mark in a very bad position just to do something which John could have done himself? It's just crazy guys. The more we get into this video, you, the more you realise how creative John actually was with his whole plot. Like this guy could have actually wrote scripts for movies and probably got a good film out of it. I'm, I'm not even joking, it's crazy. Fictions that John had created about him being a special agent convinced Mark that he was murdering someone who had a terminal brain tumour. He was told that his reward would be money, a job as a British secret service agent and sex with the spy, whom he believed was a middle aged woman. Mark had been fooled by John into believing he was working for the British secret services. He was expecting to meet the prime minister and be given a gun and up to 500,000 in cash. I just can't believe that Mark would actually fall for this type of stuff. Just imagine you was on Reddit or something like that. Some sort of chat room in this day and age and you were speaking to someone who claimed to be in the secret services. You would not give that guy one minute of explaining. You would just straight up laugh at the guy or just expose him. You are not going to carry out a murder in which some random person online tells you to do. It's just nonsense. Mark must have already had some sort of mental illness at the time. I'm trying to think of what mental illness, something along the lines of being too gullible, gullibilistic maybe. <laughs> I'm joking guys, but it's just crazy. It just This is the part that just baffles me. Like As I was watching the film, like, I watched the film the other day and this is what made me make this video because I looked online and there's not much about this case. So I watched the film and I just watched it and I thought, it's, it's actually crazy how this is real. The fact that someone made up all these lies, all these fake characters, and made another human believe it and carry out his own murder plan, it just it, it just goes beyond me, guys. Like it's just too much of a crazy story to comprehend. Let's get back into the video, guys. Anyway, all right, guys. I'm gonna explain it the best I can. This is how it all started, and this is how they all met in the first place. So John pretended to be a girl, who then approached Mark as this fake girl he made up and then was speaking to Mark for roughly 9 months as this girl. John made up several lies whilst he was playing this girl's role. He made up lies that she apparently had a boyfriend and this boyfriend was abusive and then it came to the day where John actually faked this made up girl's death and Mark would actually believe it. This is where it gets crazy guys. John pretended that this girl who he was impersonating had actually died because her boyfriend was abusive and he actually killed her by being too aggressive with her and attacking her. So then Mark was angry and he wanted answers of what happened. So John actually then made up a new character in his twisted plot and he pretended to be this dead girl's stepbrother and he reached out to Mark himself. He said to Mark, how do you know my sister? Stuff like that. And then Mark said, we've been speaking for several months 
I told her I love her. Crazy stuff, guys. I just find it crazy how John actually made up one character. He killed that character off, and then he made up a new character just to get closer to Mark. Like, guys, this guy is a real storyteller. Like, if he wasn't probably in prison by now, like, this guy could have been directing films. Or something. But yeah, they actually met in person after John came out and said he was the girl's stepbrother because they actually went to the same school, believe it or not, which is crazy. So John met Mark in person and they started planning an attack on a guy who didn't even have anything to do with anything because this never happened anyway. But Mark believed it did. Mark believed that it was her abusive boyfriend that had killed her, even though it wasn't anybody. And John was just trying to play puppet master. John was always the quiet kid in school. He frequently had problems with bullying. This is why John made this girl's account in the first place. It was to approach Mark and then tell Mark as the girl that her stepbrother, which was in fact John, was being picked on in school. And he asked Mark if Mark would protect her stepbrother, which was John. But really this was just John saying all of this, just to get himself protected in school and to make the bullies stop picking on him. Because he knew that Mark had somewhat of an influence in school and the bullies didn't mess around with him. The crucial character in John's deception was a 42 year old British secret service agent called Janet. Mark was told by her that he must commit various tasks and that John was dying from a brain tumour. Then on June 28th, 2003, Janet told Mark that he had to kill John. This was the part where Mark was told if he carried out the job successfully, he was told he would be accepted as a spy. All of this happened over a nine month period. So this gave John lots of time to brainwash and win over Mark so that he could easily kill John. Crazy right or not? You might be wondering by now, how did John even persuade Mark to kill John in the first place anyway? Well, it was quite smart how he did it. John actually got bullied in school because of his stepfather. He was of different orientation to John and they always used to make racial remarks towards John about his stepfather. John then started saying to Mark as the secret service agent that John was actually planning an attack on his school and that he needed to be stopped. This was how Mark was led to believe that he had to kill John by any means necessary. So Mark did follow through with the plan to murder John. The most crucial part of the evidence was found on Mark's computer and these were chats between him and John on the 28th of June 2003. This was the day before the murder, well the attempted murder that is anyway. Here are the messages. I will read some out, but there is over 58,000 of these messages, so I wouldn't be able to do this in one video. Maybe I'll link them to my Patreon if I get around to making one that is anyway. This is what Mark said to John, or the quote unquote spy. You want me to take him to Trapper Center and kill him in the middle of the Trapper Center? That's what you're asking me? John replied, yes. And just leave him there to die in the Trapper Center? No, stay with him. And what do I do then? Get help? Yes, I'll get help for you. Could you stab someone? I haven't really thought about it. Well, think please. Okay, um, well I watch a lot of films. Be back in 10 minutes. Think about it. Change of plan. Don't wear gloves. Pull knife out and say you took it out. Okay, but it will only have one set of fingerprints. He wore gloves. Okay. 6969. A bought code. Okay. The following day. The two boys met and went to the Trapper Centre, where Mark brought a kitchen knife. Then they went to Altrincham Town Centre, where Mark stabbed John twice, once in the chest and once in the stomach. Now I don't know about you guys, but I bet Mark and John were both feeling a high amount of pressure at this point. John knowing that he's about to get stabbed to death, and Mark thinking that I'm literally about to kill someone right now. Mark called the ambulance and told police officers that they had been attacked. But after the police seeing the CCTV footage, this disapproved his story. He was charged with attempted murder. Police only became aware of the crazy plot when they examined John's computer. After months of analysis, detectives were able to establish that it was John who sent the final messages from his home computer on the night of 28th of June 2003 and had planned his own murder. Mark pleaded guilty to attempted murder and was given a two year supervision order and banned from any contact with John. John pleaded guilty to perverting the cause of justice and incitement to murder. He was given a three year supervision order, banned from any contact with Mark and was told he must only access the internet under adult supervision and must not enter chat rooms. This is a truly crazy and hard to believe case that seems too stupid and unrealistic to be real, but it is. This kid John literally created a movie out of his twisted plot 
to get himself murdered. Just reading some of these messages between them both makes me think that John could have been so much more. The way he created his own in-depth characters and then killed them off in favour of him becoming more close with Mark is quite frankly astonishing to me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below anyway. Thanks for watching if you made it till the end. I really appreciate it guys. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more content like this.